Well, and I know that you and your wife have like a super unique story as well. What's like the oh, short God. version? The short version, because it. I think oh. it's truly like in today's society, again, like what that whole story is crazy and bananas. But more importantly, like I think it's cool that you guys have done something like that in a time where I don't think really anyone could say they had right, that they were level the of very commitment. First couple to meet on Tinder, if I remember. right. Yeah, they we actually. <laughs> <laughs> like the world first, like we were, records? dude. The world first Tinder happened at Longfellow Elementary School in like 1983 or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, 84, and uh, yeah, that's that's where it all started. Was uh, like it wasn't called Tinder back then; it was called Sandbox. Yeah. And it was really rad. She swiped sand right into your ass. Dude, it, so <laughs> all right, all that. right. All right, let's get the story out. Yeah. I will try to make this as fast as possible because I don't want to bore the viewers with, dude. With, with everybody my life. loves love, but let's be honest. Like my wife, my wife is a badass. So anyway, long story short, um, my wife and I, true story, we did meet in the fifth grade. Um, she, she did throw sand in my face in the sandbox. My best friend and her best friend were brother. Um, we're brother and sister. So we, not only that, like we were like six years old having sleepovers together because we would both stay the night at the Thomas's house at the same time. It's not like we were sleeping in the, yeah. you know, in the same Which, rooms or anything. Isn't that hilarious? There's like a weird window before you hit like middle school where you're like, everyone's my friend. We can all like hang out. It's not weird. And then there's like that weird window from like middle school to like early high school where all of a sudden it's weird and then it's like totally fine again like people can just hang out yeah absolutely continue and so we um we continued to stay friends actually all through high school we went to dances together as friends um we but we never dated because i had this thing with dating girls that i was really good with dating girls and then like as soon as we would break up we weren't friends anymore so my best friend at the time was like, you can never date Hannah because you will ruin like the best friend you've had. That's a, that's a girl. So that's, that's truly how that went down. And, um, so long story short, what ended up happening is we graduated high school. We both went our separate ways, went to college. Um, she decided she was going up to Denver. I, I came up to Denver. She went up to see you Boulder actually, but. I was traveling after that, you know, I was traveling, you know, with snowboarding. Um, that's how I put myself through college. And what was awesome is I ran into an old friend of ours who actually was Hannah's first love, which is crazy. That's new information. Well, so Jeff Hurley is, was Hannah's first love. And I ran back into him. You know, we, we grew up in a small town. Slida wasn't a big town, so you were friends with everyone, right? And so I run back into him. And he's just like, dude, it is so crazy that you are truly living the life that you said you were going to live. You know, I wrote an essay in second grade that said, I'm going to draw pictures, ride a snowboard and a bicycle for a living. Like, that's what I'm going to do with my life. And what's so crazy is my mom still has that little essay slash paragraph slash I could only write like two sentences. So I wrote really big to take up a whole page to make it look like it was a paragraph, you know. Um, she still has There's going to be a link to that. <laughs> <laughs> she, Post that on Instagram. Yeah. yeah. She, um, she actually still has that in a shoebox with like all of my tickets for noise pollution from like high school. Oh, that's great. Which is really, really awesome. But um, yeah, I don't know where I was going. So you and Jeff life. Hurley, you meet and you're like, Dude, like it's we so crazy run back in. Yeah. He's like, we run back into each other, right? And I was, and it was at a, it was at a special Olympic event and he's like, he came up and he goes, he tapped me on the shoulder and I turned around and he's like, dude, what are you doing up here? I was like, I'm, you know, I'm volunteered with the special Olympics. And he's like, that is so rad. I, I've been seeing, you know, it's awesome that you're traveling the world snowboarding and doing all that shit. And I was like, what are you doing? Like, we need to go back to Salida for the weekend. Cause we were at Copper Mountain at the time. I had a I had a brief opening before I was headed to Utah, so I was like, "Let's go back to Slida for old time's sake." He's like, "I gotta work." I said, "However much you make it work, I will double it for you to come home for the weekend. Just call in sick." That's the dream. That's what I would do with money. <laughs> I've literally had actual dreams 
of me just going in a limo to all of my friends' jobs <laughs> and just paying their boss for their time for like two days and just driving away in a limo. Well, so and he's just like, I think I can, I think I can swing it. So let's see what's going on. So we we go up and we're we we're up in Salida. We're we're snowboarding Monarch. We're having a great time. We go to our favorite little restaurant in Salida Patio Pancake. We're having breakfast there, and of course, like a lot of our friends from high school are still in Salida. And one of the waitresses there still, you know, comes up and we're just bullshitting. And she goes, and and Jeff goes, you know, are you ever going to get married? And I'm like, I will never get married in my life unless I run back into Hannah Jones. I said, if I run back into her, I'll, I will ask her to marry me on the spot. Because I hadn't seen her for seven years. And Jeff goes, you know what's crazy is I've got her phone number. I said, no shit. I was like, give it to me. He's like, you know, he taps his pocket. He's like, oh, shit, my phone's out in the car. He's like, but I'll get it to you before I leave. We completely forget about this whole thing, right? We go our separate ways. Like, he forgets to give me the phone number. We go our, we go our separate ways. Well, here's what's crazy about this whole thing. Three months later, Hannah and I run into each other at Fibark. Hadn't seen each other for seven years. Three months later, we run back into each other. Um little boating festival that happens. I went back every year. She never went back. And we run into each other and it was like, holy shit. I'm going to marry this girl. I went home that night and I saw my mom and I go, mom, I just saw the girl I'm going to marry. And she goes, who is it? And I said, Hannah Johnson. She goes, that's fabulous because you know, my mom knew Hannah because she used to come to the house. So she knew her through, through high school. And so she's like, that's freaking fabulous. And I was like, yeah, right. So I go home like the next day and I'm like, I can't believe that I just told my mom I'm going to marry this, this woman. And, uh, I'm like, I can't be doing this shit. You know, I'm 24 years old. I'm on top of the world. I'm traveling the world, snowboarding. I'm having a blast. I'm going to California and I love I'm, that you tried to run away. You're like, oh, yeah, no. I'm running. True story. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm running away. I am going to run away from this whole thing, right? Because I remember the conversation with Jeff. I was like, if I ever run back into her, I'm going to marry her on the spot. And I'm like, holy shit, this is like really weird. I haven't seen her for seven years. Magically run back into her. I was like, I'm going to California. So I go to California and, and my clothing sponsor at the time had just amazingly beautiful women as for the sponsorship. You know, like he was friends with like all these perfect 10 models. And so I was like, that'll get my mind off of her. You know what I'm saying? Like hang out with beautiful women on the beach. <laughs> Done deal. All of a sudden I can't get my mind off of her. I fly back home and I'm telling you, God set this whole thing up. Like literally God put Hannah on this earth to be my guardian angel and to be, to be the love of my life because as I am getting off of the plane, I am walking up the tarmac. My phone rings. It's Hannah. And she's like, Hey, quick question for you. Um, you want to go see Kenny Rogers tomorrow night? And I'm like, yeah, shit. Why not? Let's go see Kenny Rogers. So she comes down, we go see Kenny Rogers. I tell her about the story that happened when I saw Jeff, you know, three months earlier. And she goes, Oh, we've got to prank him. So I said, okay, let's prank him. So we call him from the Kenny Rogers concert. I love what that says about Hannah, right? Like, <laughs> that's, you told her that you told your friends you're going to marry her. And she's like, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's, that's exactly how it was. And so we called him. We called Jeff back. And we're like, hey, so here's the deal. I ran back into Hannah. And, um, I, you know, I know John Elway. And he's like, yeah, of course. Let me guess. You got up on stage at Kenny Rogers. Yeah, I got up on stage at Kenny Rogers, and I pro I proposed to Hannah at John Elway's induction into the Hall of Fame. And he's like, of course you did. And I was like, and she said yes. And he's like, no fucking way. That is, <laughs> he's like, that is awesome. Like, he was so stoked about it. He was, he was on, like, cloud nine. And I'm like. Also, he, like, what is, I love that it's who you are, that that's not weird, right? Like. The story of like, yeah, I crashed John Elway's party. And this is like when John Elway is on top of the world. 
<laughs> and it's not like he's anywhere yeah, he's less, like, but, like, I love that, like, who you are as a person. You would not have any confidence problems crashing John Elway's party. That is a genuinely believable story. It's like, John, sorry, you're going to have to. I know you're getting a key to the city and you're going to the Hall of Fame, but I got to propose to my wife here. Oh, sorry, take a back seat. But, um, so... So we pull this prank on him, and he's like, that's awesome. We should have a party for you guys. And we're like, yeah, absolutely. He's like, my parents are coming up to town next weekend. And we're like, oh, shit. We better call his parents and let them know that we're, that we're pranking Jeff. So his parents come up, and they actually stay with me at, 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 at my house at the time. Hannah's there. Jeff shows up. Hannah and I plan this whole thing out. I decided I was buying us in, for, our first, for our first engagement present i bought us a brand new house oh, that's and it was in the mountains and i surprise her with it like i get down on one knee and i have it folded up in a little box you know it's like it's the ring you know and i say here's our new house i open it she opens the present she's like you bought us a house without like consoling with me like you know going over this with me at first like we're supposed to be a team and you just bought a house like without me like a house is like a huge decision she's like it's over i can't be with a control freak and we blow out into this huge fight so the next thing we know jeff and his girlfriend are on the couch in tears crying like literally truly in tears crying and hannah and i are like oh shit we're like prank we got you motherfuckers and the parents were in on it. Everyone oh. thought it was hilarious. Everyone's laughing. And those guys were like so bummed by it. So this is how fast this happened is from that day, it only took 10 days after that for me to actually truly propose to Hannah. It was like three days afterwards. I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. I said, I called Hannah and I asked her, I said, did that like fake engagement feel real to you at all you know i just wanted to see where she was at at the time you know because she wasn't wanting to get married you know we're 24 you know 25 years old like we're not wanting to get married at this point in time in our lives you know and she's just like yeah um it seemed pretty real and i was like oh that's interesting so i go and buy a ring off of that answer yeah, that's the kind of Zach Lewis confidence we can all get get behind. I then was going to propose to her like that night, but she didn't have a babysitter for the girls. So what had to happen was I had to convince her her friend at the time to babysit the girls. Oh, so you talked to her friend like, "Hey, I yeah, need you to babysit yeah, the girls." Yeah, I need you to babysit. And out. she's like, "Well, I can do it. I can do it like it was like Thursday or Friday night is the earliest I can do it." So I'm like, "I have to hold on to this ring for four days." So I took it back to where I bought the ring and was like, you have to hold on to this for four days. Otherwise, I'm going to make a bad decision. So they hold on to it for four days because I would I would have just proposed to her like and not made it romantic at all. And you Oh, know, I'm picturing you would have you were afraid you were going to lose it. That's no, what no, was, that's, that's yeah. What no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah so that's I was absolutely like, what I would do. So I'm yeah. sitting there like, OK, so here's the deal, you know, because I'm the worst person when it comes to giving presents. Like if I buy you a gift. The second I have purchased it, I'm already giving you hints of what I just purchased. I'm like, hey, Gavin, guess what I just got you? This is true. Are your feet cold? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, just, I, I got you new socks. <laughs> but guess what I just got you? Yeah. You, you know, I'm just horrible when it comes to stuff. So, you know, a, a purchase such as this was just driving me insane. And I, I had it. I was able to hold it on, on to it, you know, for they held on to it for like three days, I think. And I then picked it up drove straight up to her and she's like, I was like, oh, you want to go on a little, little date? And we drove up, um, like the lookout mountain in, uh, Boulder. Golden. Golden. No, not oh, lookout mountain. One. There's the, what the overview of Boulder. What, what, oh, um, whatever it's called, whatever that's called. I drive up to the top of that. I don't even make it all the way to the top to where we're looking out over the city really, because I'm so excited about this whole thing. Like I walk in, I pick her up. I'm like, let's go. And uh, I, I take her up there and we get like three quarters of the way up the hill. I'm like, I can't, I'm so, 
screwing this surprise up, I'm pulling over right here. Like we can kind of see the city, but we're not at the top of the hill. And she's <laughs> like, what's going on? And I just kind of looked at her and I go, um, huh. And all of a sudden I pull out a box. I pull out the ring. I didn't even say anything to her. And she looks at me and she goes, are you shitting me? And like, she knew exactly what was going down. And she goes, are you shitting me? And I said, no. And she goes, yes. And she opens the box. I didn't even say, will you marry me? She just, she just knew. Like she knew what was going down. And she's like, yes. And what's crazy about this whole thing is we hadn't even said, I love you to one another yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we had said, love you. You know, yeah, like, like when we hang up the phone, that you care for each other and all that, but like right. never in like a romantic way, right? Like exact same way when you and I hang up the phone and I'm like, love you, buddy. Yeah, that's exactly how we did this whole thing. Like we hadn't even said I love you to each other yet. We hadn't even like officially gone on like a real quote unquote date. Dude, what do you mean? You drove three quarters of the way up a mountain you can't remember. That's amazing. That's the most romantic thing I've ever heard. I just was so, like, I. it was one of those things where, like, I just kind of knew. So we called Jeff up. Like, he was one of the first people we called, and he's like, yeah, fuck you guys. I'm not falling for that shit again, right? Oh. And I was like, no, literally, I'm calling you because I want you to be one of the one of the groomsmen. And he's like... Yeah, I'll be one of the groom groomsmen if it actually happens. And I was like, okay, well, just knowing about a year and a half from now, you're going to be a groomsman. Because we wanted to get married on a Friday the 13th in the middle of the winter. That's what we wanted. That's hilarious. <laughs> right? Like, we were like, let's bust all superstitions here. That's like, uh, I just heard Tenacious D does something similar before every show. They just go backstage and they just... Talk about what a terrible show they're about to have <laughs> just to like bust through the superstitions. They're like, yeah, let's just get it all out of the way. Yeah. And so we said, let's do that. And the next thing you know, this all happened in, let's see, it would have been August when this ha- when when I proposed. And we were kind of planning the wedding a little bit, you know, just like talking about what we wanted to do. Well, Thanksgiving rolls around and we tell the family we've picked a date. And her parents and my parents are like, hell no, that's not happening. We want you married sooner. And we're like, huh? Like, yeah, we we, we want this to happen before then. And so Hannah and I are like, okay. So literally Thanksgiving, I gave Hannah's mom my credit card information. And she had the entire wedding planned for us. Got this beautiful mansion for us up in Telluride. Run it out like half of this hotel room for like all the guests to stay in, you know, that were coming up for the wedding. Um, Got everything planned out. We were married January 15th. That's awesome. So like literally like two months after we said, here's, here's when we're getting married. um, We actually ended up getting married like two months after we actually set the date of when it was going to happen. And the rest is, the rest is history, you know? Um, just, That's it's it's such a rad story. It's truly been like the best 15 years of my life being back with her, to be honest with you. Yeah, she's she's the coolest. Shout out That's to a, Hannah. Shout out to Hannah. You're literally yeah. the raddest. She just threw us a wedding party because you guys weren't able to make it to our wedding. Right. She's like, unacceptable. I'm just going to throw a giant house party so that we can just do it all over again. Yeah, she's, yeah. she is. She, she truly is, you know, and as you guys know, it is hard to find someone that will put up with your shit when you are who we are. And we literally play on bicycles and snowboards and skateboards. And sleds. And, and sleds. <laughs> and it's like, what are you doing today? I'm going sledding. You're a grown ass man. Mm-hmm. It's going to yeah. be sick. We're yeah. going to be dangerous yeah. about it's it. It's like, it doesn't matter if I'm 40 years old. I am going to go light this trash can on fire and jump over it. <laughs> Sounds like it sounds like what could possibly go wrong. So it really takes a special type of person to put up with that. And Hannah and the best part is, is Hannah doesn't just go with it. She truly, truly supports it. You know, she's just like stands behind me 100 percent on everything I do. And is just like if I'm having a bad day, she's like, get the hell out of here. Call your friends. Go ride your bike. 
go ride your skateboard, go up to the mountains for the weekend, go snowboarding, you know, do, do you come back happy and healthy, you know? And, oh, wonderful. That's, everybody loves love. <laughs>